something very dark about our scripture lessons today. We spoke an intro at Saul about betrayal and persecution. We heard about false prophets in our Old Testament lesson, hostility towards Christ in our epistle, and division within families in our gospel lesson. In a way, these readings, although quite grim, are also very realistic. We know that our lives are not all miraculous healings, banquets, and unbridled joy. Daily struggles and challenges permeate our lives and torment us constantly. Thanks be to God that our scripture lessons offer a realistic picture of life and give us God's answer for these problems. Let us consider now the prophet Jeremiah. He records our Lord's rebuke of the false prophets and those who listen to them. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And that last phrase, it shall be well with you, would be better translated, peace shall be yours. What a damnable lie that those who despise the word of the Lord would actually have peace. Peace with God or peace in general. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it is as if the Lord was speaking directly to 21st century America through that 6th century B.C. prophet. How often have our culture and even other Christians ignored, disregarded, and despised the clear and plain word of the Lord? Every day, the news media lauds and praises the rejection of God's clear teaching on marriage and family. The entertainment industry aggrandizes every sinful exercise of our human sexuality, all the while mocking and disparaging sexuality's pure form, marriage, and the procreation of children. The scriptural understanding of human life is denied and human babies are murdered with America's blessing and financial assistance. In all of these topics and more, the false prophets of this age encourage the rejection of God's word, much like the prophets of old. It's all good, they say. Peace will be yours. No disaster will befall you. And that is a lie. These false teachers and the people they deceive are rejecting God's law, denying their own sin, and discarding the salvation that Christ has already won for them. In justifying every sinful action they commit, they are denying and rejecting their own need for a Savior. It's not all good to do that. They will not find peace. Behold the word of the Lord from Jeremiah, and you will see a vivid picture of God's wrath that is promised. Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest that will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his eye. Clearly, the Lord is greatly angered by those who teach and preach falsely, especially those who confirm sinners in their sin so that they separate themselves from the salvation that Christ has won for them. This is a real problem. Not only in society, but also within churches that call themselves Christian. False prophets have been so successful that entire Christian denominations have adopted and endorsed practices that are undeniably, clearly, contrary to God's word. These false prophets are dragging an entire generation of God's children into condemnable darkness. So how can we protect ourselves and our children from falling victim to these false teachers. The Lord provides us with that answer. He isolates the very nature and cause of these false prophets and their errors. In verse 18, the Lord says, Who among them has 
stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word, or who has paid attention to his word and listened. And in verse 22, but if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. The word of God leads sinners to repentance and to the mercy that God offers. So faithful children of God, it is clear to us from these words that our protection from those who lead us astray is to sit in the counsel of the Lord, to see and to hear His word. If we want to protect ourselves and our children from the traps of the devil, there is no better shield and weapon than attending Bible study, Sunday school, the divine service, and studying God's word at home regularly. Why? Because the righteousness of Jesus Christ is revealed only in God's Word. You will not find it anywhere else. Here it is given for your salvation. And do not think that attending these things mindlessly will offer some sort of protection like a magic talisman. Come ready to listen. The mindset of one preparing for battle. Now so far in this sermon, it's been very easy for us confessional Lutherans to sit back and pat ourselves on the back. After all, we are not like those other churches and the rest of secular society. We don't condone the killing of unborn children. We don't disregard God's word on issues of marriage and creation. Now, lest we become secure in the status quo and think that our current exposure to God's word is good enough, Look around and notice how vastly outnumbered we are in the world. Is our testimony to the truth of God's word so weak and unconvincing? Have we been too quiet when different churches stray from the truth? God says in Jeremiah 23, Let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. That admonition is not only for pastors or those in authority, but for everyone who has his word. That includes you. Through continued Bible study and divine service, your families will be strengthened, but you will be strengthened and prepared as well to give testimony to the truth of God's word in a world that prefers the lie. Now, what will be the result when we faithfully attend Bible study, raise our children in the faith, study God's word at home, and attend the divine service. What will happen to us when we grow in the word and testify to it? According to our intro at Psalm for today, you will be rejected and mocked by your own friends. We already know that the enemies of God's word will react with hostility to a faithful testimony. But it is the betrayal of friends that surprises us and hurts us so deeply. Listen again to the heart-wrenching words of Psalm 55. It is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It is not an adversary who deals insolently with me, then I could hide from him. It is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to take sweet counsel together. Within God's house we walk in the throng. You can hear King David's pain as he pens this song. A close friend has fallen away. They no longer have fellowship in God's house. Instead, the deserter stands outside, mocking and taunting his former friend. <coughs> At one time or another, we have all been there with family and friends who have left the church. Perhaps it was a son or a grandson who has swallowed the poison of the false prophets. Perhaps it was friends who now deride you, their former friend. They ask you how you can possibly believe all that nonsense about miracles and Jesus rising from the dead. They call you a bigot or an hateful because you agree with what God's word says on marriage and family. They call you a moron for believing that God could create the world in six 24-hour days. They ask you how you could possibly belong to a synod that does not ordain women as pastors. Their laundry list of grievances goes on and on, and they only scoff when you respond, that's what God's word says. And while they mock you, you long for your friend. You pray for them. You remember the sweet and blessed conversations shared once upon a time. But 
but they have exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and you must remain with the steadfast word of God. So the bottom line is this. In this sinful world, the truth of Jesus Christ divides, and the division hurts. Jesus acknowledges this in our gospel lesson. He says, do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. We wish it were not so. And we will forever speak the truth to our friends and family in the hopes that they will repent and believe. But the cold, hard reality is that sinners in this world are hostile, even to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now this reality should not surprise us, because we too are numbered among the sinners. We too are sinners who have rejected God's word, broken his commandments, and in our hearts we wish that the easy way of the false prophets were true. We are the sinners from Hebrews 12 who gave Christ the hostility that he endured. As often as we neglect and despise God's word, we are the rotten friend from Psalm 55 who betrays our friend, Jesus, the son of David. And yet there is a great and eternal difference between we who listen to the word of God and those who abandon it. All are sinners, but while they justify their sin as righteous and acceptable, so denying their Savior, we look with repentance to our Lord Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. My fellow me, the division we experience in this world and in our families, though heartbreaking and terrible, is nothing compared to the division we would experience between us and God if Christ had not redeemed us by his blood and united us to his death and resurrection in holy baptism. Since Jesus has reconciled us to the Father, we may now live with hope despite all the pain and division that we experience. Even if your family is divided by this gospel of Jesus Christ, you are united to Him, to Him who died for your sins, who is risen and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, so that you now have a new and heavenly family. Through faith in the powerful workings of Jesus Christ, we are united to one another. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we come together here in this holy hall to eat and dine at the Lord's table together. We sit here together to learn and grow in His pure word. Though the world around us is hostile to our Lord and His word, here we have a haven where we can be refreshed in His word and built up to endure all of the trials set for us. For in this world there will continue to be false prophets, hostile persecution, and painful division. The only steadfast source of protection that we Christians have is the sure and certain Word of God. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, God has separated you from your sin and united you with Christ. In that kind of division, you do receive God's peace. For you are no longer bound to your sin or imprisoned in your death as a deserved punishment. You are rescued, pulled out, separated from sin and death, and joined to Jesus Christ who lives and reigns. In that union, you have peace and security as God has promised. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand to sing together our offering.